Good morning, my name is Natasha Pacheco and I was presented with the research question, how are the limitations of free speech in public schools an illustration of the First Amendment? First, we need to understand what the First Amendment actually is and what it states. It states that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. This applies to public schools because there are certain limitations on what you can do with religion, speech, press, assembly, and petition in school. My claim is that the First Amendment's limitations are carefully implemented into the public school system in order to not obstruct students' basic freedoms while also establishing the line between student rights and student privileges inside learning facilities. One of my sources is time, place, and manner restrictions. Time, place, and manner basically defines where you can protest or express yourself, the time, the place, and the restrictions. They still allow expression inside public schools. In the visual, they're showing the time, place, and manner. These restrictions keep students from being harassed, bullied, or stereotypes. Another one of my sources is Tinker v. Des Moines in 1965. Students wore armbands in support of the Vietnam War to school, and two days before the protest took place, the principal decided that they did not want these armbands to appear in school. Although the students were made aware of this decision, they decided to wear the armbands to school anyway. They were suspended from the school, and the, the parents took action and brought it to court. This, this case made it all the way up to Supreme Court, up to a 7-2 decision, making it constitutional. They stated that students did not lose their First Amendment rights to freedom of speech when they stepped onto school property. This is Mary Beth Tinker and Christopher Eckhart, the two students that wore the armbands to the school. Another one of my sources is five things public schools can and can't do when it comes to dress codes. Another restriction that we face is dress code. Dress codes cannot be ex explicitly discriminatory and all students are allowed to wear clothing consistent with their gender and identity of expression. This basically means that the public school system cannot assign consistent um, gender identity and expression uniforms to students. Dress code also cannot target or unevenly enforce against particular groups of students. Schools can also not discriminate based on viewpoints expressed by your clothing, which also ties back to Tinker v. Des Moines. Grooming codes regulating hair length, jewelry, or ear piercings can raise many of the same issues. My conclusion is that these limitations are strategically set in place in order to create a safer, functioning, and more effective learning environment for students to be free of distractions. Thank you. What are your questions? All right, two questions for you. First up, how valid and reliable were the sources that you used, and then how do you know they were? My sources were valid and reliable because my first source was the First Amendment, which is in our Constitution, and it's practically what the United States is based upon. And can you repeat the question? Sure. Um, how valid and reliable were the sources you used, and then how do you know? Um, my other source was a court case, Tinker v. Des Moines, and I've reviewed it several times. I also got the information from the court case off of a law organization, which is Cornell Law School, and my third source was off of ACLU, which is an organization that studies and dissects the First Amendment and the Constitution. Okay, and next question. What advice would you have for other researchers that consider this topic? Some advice that I would have for other researchers that consider this topic is to keep an open mind because personally I struggled with how I approached the question due to how vague or contradicting it might seem. 
So anyone that um, approaches this question in the future should always keep an open mind and be willing to see different viewpoints. You're done. You can